purpose of this video is to outline the criteria we look at when measuring a crankshaft bearing journal. This will allow us to determine its condition. The four things we measure for are as follows. We measure for taper, out of round, minimum wear, and maximum wear. Now this journal here that we'll be measuring today is a main bearing journal on a crankshaft from a 2019 Mitsubishi Mirage 1.2 liter three cylinder engine. Now in order to find journal taper out around minimum wear and maximum wear, we need to measure the journal in eight different places. Now because the measurements need to be accurate down to a 10 thousandth of an inch, an outside micrometer is our tool of choice. Once the measurements are taken, all eight of them, we can use them to determine the condition of the journal and we can decide from there to simply polish the journal and reuse the crankshaft as is or we can determine whether or not the crankshaft is damaged or worn down to the point where it must be ground undersized and then therefore used in conjunction with undersized bearings. Now the eight measurements are taken in very specific locations around the journal and the first step to get these eight measurements is to divide the journal into two halves and we label one half or one end end A and the other end or the other half we label as end B. Now, once we've determined the ends, we divide the ends up into four equally spaced areas around the circumference of that journal. And then we measure with an outside micrometer at each of these locations. So for example, we would measure here at end A and over here at end B. And then we would come back to end A, move the micrometer slightly, and we would take another couple of measurements until we've completely measure the circumference of that journal on both ends. So let's go ahead and do that now. Got my outside micrometer. I'm gonna go to end A here first. Take my measurement. Move it over to end B, still in this first position. Take my measurement. Find a second position here, moving back to end A. Take my measurement. Over to end B. Take my measurement. I move it to a third position here. Back on end A. Take my measurement. Move it to NB. And then lastly, a fourth position, starting at end A. And then moving to end B. So with these eight measurements written down, we can start doing some calculations. To help us with our calculations, we're gonna use this table here. And at the far left-hand side, you can see that we've got a couple of columns where we can put all of our end A and end B measurements. So let's start there. So first position on end A, we found that we have 1.8112 as our measurement. On end B, sliding over, we have 1.8111. And A position two, and B position two, and A position three, and B position three, and then our last fourth position on end A and end B. So we can use these numbers here to calculate our taper and our out of round, our min wear, and our max wear. So first we're gonna start off by calculating taper. So when we calculate taper, we're just comparing end A to end B. So we're comparing the surface of the journal across from end A to end B, and any difference is going to be taper. So looking at position one, we can see that we have one ten thousandth of an inch difference there. Sliding down to position two, we actually don't have any difference there, so we have zero ten thou. Position three, we look at the difference between and A and B, and we can see that we've got one tenth out taper there as well. 
And then lastly, at position four, we also have one ten thou taper. Now we're just looking for overall taper on the journal. So we're going to get the biggest number. Now, because I have three of them at one ten thou, I'm just going to pick one. So I'll pick the first one there and I'll enter that as my overall taper measurement. Up next is our out of round calculation. And we use our out of round calculation to see if the journal is oval shaped or egg shaped. So to do this, we look at end A individually and we look at end B individually. And we're just looking at the various measurements we have taken around the circumference of it. And we take the largest measurement and we subtract the smallest measurement from it. So at end A, our largest measurement is position four at 1.8113. And the smallest measurement is position one at 1.8112. So comparing those two, we see that we have a difference of one ten thousandth of an inch. So therefore on end A, we've got one ten thou out of round. Moving over to end B, we're looking for the largest measurement, which is position three, 1.8113. And the smallest measurement is position one at 1.8111. So looking at the difference there, we can see that we have two ten thou taper. And since we're looking for the overall out of round on this journal, we're gonna pick the larger of the two. So in this case, NB. And we'll enter that down below there. The last two measurements that we're going to take a look at are min wear and max wear. Now, in order to calculate min wear and max wear, or the minimum and maximum amount of wear that has occurred on the journal, we first have to know what the journal diameter was when it was new, or the standard diameter. So I've looked up on service information and found our spec. So new, this journal would have fallen in between 1.8110 inches and 1.8122 inches. Now to determine which of those two numbers we use to compare our measurements to, we take a look to see it, how our eight measurements fit within that range. And by looking at our eight measurements, they all fall within that range of 1.8110 to 1.8122, which means that that journal that we've measured was likely closer to the 1.8122 diameter when it was brand new. So that's the number we're going to use. So when we're looking at minimum wear, we're looking for the least amount of wear that has occurred on that journal. So we're gonna look at all of our eight measurements together and we're gonna pick the largest diameter that we have measured. So in this case, we've got a couple of them, one at NB position three, and one at end A position four, they're both 1.8113. So that's what we're gonna to choose to subtract from 1.8122 or our standard journal diameter. So we do some math, some subtraction here, and we find that our min wear is sitting at nine ten thousandths of an inch. So that means that we've worn away approximately nine ten thousandths of an inch from the standard journal diameter. So we'll enter that down there and turn to max wear. So with max wear, we're looking for the most amount of wear on the journal or the most amount of material that has worn away. So therefore we're looking for the smallest diameter that we have measured. So in this case, that's at NB position one, uh, 1 1.8111 inches. And we'll compare that to our standard journal diameter, once again, of 1.8122, that remains unchanged, which means that we have a max wear of 11 ten thousandths of an inch. And we'll enter that down there at the bottom. Now, the reason we calculate min and max wear is to determine how much wear has occurred on the journal so that we can calculate approximately what our oil clearance is going to be. Now to approximate our oil clearance or to get a good idea of what our oil clearance is going to be, we first need to know what our oil clearance was with a standard diameter journal. So once again, we look up our spec and we found that the standard oil clearance for this main journal was between 10 and 16 ten thousandths of an inch with a maximum oil clearance or a service limit of 40 ten thousandths. 
So when this journal was new, we could have anywhere between 10 and 16 10 thousandths of an inch oil clearance. We're just going to pick a number in the middle or an average clearance of 13 10 thousandths of an inch. And therefore, since we have worn away between 9 and 11 10 thousandths of an inch, so there's my min and max wear values, we need to add that to that 13 10 thou oil clearance that it had when it was new. So let's do that first. So we're going to add 9 10 thousandths of an inch to our standard oil clearance of 13 10 thousandths. So right now with that slight amount of wear, we're going to end up around 22 thousandths of an inch oil clearance. And where the most amount of wear has occurred on the journal, indicated by our max wear value of 11 10 thousandths of an inch, we'll add that to our 13 10 thou standard oil clearance and the most worn part of the journal will give us about 24 10 thousandths of an inch oil clearance. So by looking at these two numbers we can determine that we'll have a range of oil clearance from about 22 10 thousandths to 24 10 thousandths. Comparing that to our standard oil clearance of 10 to 16 10 thousandths we can see that we're out of spec here a little bit but we have to keep in mind that we have a service limit of 40 10 thou and we're well under that. To make a conclusion about this journal, we need to take all of our calculations that we've done into consideration. So we need to once again look at taper and out of round, and then we also need to factor in the range of oil clearance, which we just calculated as well. Now for taper and out of round, we have a maximum value or a maximum spec of 10 10 thousandths of an inch. We cannot exceed that. Now looking at our taper value that we calculated, we're sitting at 1 10 thou, so we're well under that spec, so we're okay there. Our out of round also looks pretty good at 2 10 thousandths of an inch. We're under our limit of 10 10 thou there, so looks pretty good there as well. Now our range of oil clearance as we discussed is a little bit out of spec as far as our standard oil clearance goes, but well under our service limit. So we can conclude that by polishing up this journal, we can reuse it. We'll just use it with standard sized bearings. Now we have to repeat this process for all of the other journals on the crankshaft, but as long as we come to the same conclusion for all the journals, we can go ahead and reuse this crankshaft. We can reinstall it into the engine, put the engine back into a vehicle, and put it back into service without any issues.